Today, I played through one of the most expensive game in Steam's history and also questioned the developer himself to get a better understanding of his motives behind all of this. I even dug a little deeper to paint a better picture of this man's character to really know if he is nothing more than just a scumbag scammer. He's working on another project right now actually, though I can't say if that is a game or site or whatever. I just know he's cooking something up, which is why I think it's more important to get this out now than ever. So this all started when my man Om um, mentioned the $2,000 game that I had never even heard of the hidden and the unknown the hidden and unknown is a story based game that aims to widen the perception of its audience in the areas of psychology and philosophy the game is obviously no longer available for purchase but as mentioned in the title it was retailing at 2000 us dollars apparently the game was taken down due to some sort of investigation from steam in other words i assume they received so many reports that steam had no choice but to look into it i didn't even know that was possible can we talk a heyday next please my review has already been drowned out by all the positive fake ones. But Mr. Pro has stated that he could, at any moment, relist the game back on the market, but he's just too lazy. Scrolling past the images, you get the idea that this game is really nothing more than a novel. I'm hesitant to call it a visual novel, as the only images throughout the entire game are just some AI-generated backgrounds. That's not me accusing him of using AI, by the way. Not only is it painfully obvious, but he also just admitted it himself. I know AI art and whatnot is such a hot topic nowadays, so I thought I'd just mention it here. Since there isn't really much to talk about gameplay wise, I'll instead focus more on the story he's trying to tell. We start off with this 8 minute long Star Wars scrolling apologue which basically summarizes down to men are weak, women are strong, but for humanity to survive and thrive it needs to be the other way around. Many journalists have taken this to mean he's basically complaining about men's rights or whatever, but Mr. Pro said that wasn't the case and he just mentioned that men are weak. Yeah, I don't really understand all the men's right discourse here, but I do still think that this whole thing reeks of sexism, in my humble opinion of course. I'm sorry for all the stock footage I'm about to use, I'm about to summarize 1 hour and 30 minutes of just this. Brian and a girl similar to his age are standing underneath a tree next to a river. Listen, Miranda, just tell me the truth, I want to hear it from you. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to tell you. Oh god, this is the worst fucking thing I've ever done. Thank god no one's home. So you can skip through it if you want. Other than that, all you need to really know is that a man named Brian gave up his life to become one with an AI being, 2123. He was basically reborn as a child with the brain of both himself and the AI, though he doesn't remember his past life. Think Colonel Miles from Avatar 2, basically something like that. At the age of 13, he had to move in with his father, and since he didn't like his father, he gets more quieter and distant from his friends and classmates, which of course leads to them believing that he has gamer syndrome. Not actually, I just don't want to say the disease out loud. Anyways, Brian gets sad because nobody likes him anymore. That sadness lets the AI take over. They travel a year into the future. Blah blah blah. Brian gets girlfriend. She cheats on him. She tries ruining his life, but Brian ruins hers instead. He graduates, joins the military, and then all it fours the game because that's about when Mr. Pro finally got back to me and I lost any drive I had to finish this game. Though I will admit, I was having a little fun playing all these characters. I just might have some problems. What's interesting is that his website only links to his discord with a contact email at the bottom. I obviously shot him an email to sound a little more professional while also joining the discord. It was here that he just asked why the fuck I emailed him when I could have just asked there instead. Well I'm sorry for trying to take myself a little more seriously okay. Anyways the first question I asked was of course about the price. Why $2000? I find it strange that he didn't answer it himself but instead asked his friend I'm assuming to answer it instead. Either because he's tired of getting asked the same question or he was too lazy to type it out himself. The game was supposedly priced at $2,000 for the simple reason of publicity, to get people talking about him as there is no such thing as bad publicity according to him. Which, I mean, there is evidence to support the opposite is true. This is also where I got my feelings tickled a little bit. I honestly think he was mad that I cracked the game in general. <laughs> yes, yes, I know, lock me up. I'm sorry for not paying this guy $2,000, okay? Mr. Pro also mentioned something quite absurd. According to him, he was offered $500,000 dollars in venture capital to produce another game which she would turn down. Now I have no idea how venture capitalists work outside of America or if this man is even telling the truth but let's assume he is. What in the ever loving fuck did these guys see in this that made them think yeah we can trust this guy with our money. I swear these foreign VCs have to get their shit together first the day before and now this guy. I then asked how much money he's made from the game to which he obviously doesn't give me a number but he does say that he has made all of his money back. 
I'm assuming he means he got back the hundred dollars he used to actually put his game on the market because that's an actual steam fee for some reason. Either that or he means he made back any money he might have spent on making the game. I have reason to believe it's the first reason because who the fuck actually bought this game? Let's be real. <laughs> but I don't really know and it really doesn't matter anyways. He's made his money or well technically I guess he hasn't and he's moved on. As I was finishing up the first draft, I looked back at the server and saw that he and his homeboy were poking fun at my ego a little more. Mr. Pro admitted to leaving crumbs on the internet that journalists could have used to make him look bad, but nobody ever did a proper investigation on him, including me. This guy also called me a passive aggressive goober and said a little more that I can't be saying on YouTube for obvious reasons, but forget all that. How dare he insult my research? Though to be fair, I really wasn't going to look into him any further had he just not said anything. <laughs> now I want to make some things very clear. One, I didn't research everything alone, I actually had a friend to help. Two, everything I'm about to share is public information that doesn't really take a genius to find. And I left out or skimmed through quite a bit of things that don't really matter to the story. And three, I have no idea if what we found was everything he left or even related to what he was referring to, but it at least paints a better picture of Mr. Pro's true character. So Pro X is honestly a lot of things, but we have four main variations. Pro X Services, Pro X Shop, Pro X Clan, and the Pro X Publisher. Pro X Services seems to be some kind of management consultant for businesses or entrepreneurs. Not really much to say there. Pro X Shop was, well, a shop where all prices practically rivaling those of Gucci. I asked if these prices were right to which he replied that it didn't matter because I am the only one that even knows about the site. But realistically then, if it serves practically no purpose at all, then why keep it up? But his reason as to why he keeps not only the shop up, but also the services site is that he's just too lazy to take them down. There's not much more to it than that. We already know what Pro X Publishing is, and Pro X Clan was sort of like a fan base or group that he created before he went full on $2,000 game on us. A perfect segue to talking about the man himself. Before Pro X, we had The Pro, a musician slash rapper. I'm not here to criticize his music or anything, but his original channel was pretty active even a while after creating the Pro X name. Though there were two channels under the same name for some reason, with one being more active than the other. He has at some point or another link to each of these channels on his website too. And on his official Instagram page, he lists his name as Brian Statham, which was who I assumed was the founder of Pro X and the man I talked to. However, when I search Pro X on LinkedIn, there's one employee listed as the founder. Imrik, and yeah, his last name doesn't matter. I'm not gonna read it just so people don't say I'm doxing him or whatever, but it's literally on LinkedIn so you can read it pretty fucking easily. But honestly, I don't even know if this is his real name either. I initially asked in the server who Imrik was, but he basically denied even knowing him, claiming he was just some rich guy. Imrik, I'm rich, get it. If we were to match these two photos up, I think it's pretty clear to say that these two are the same person. And I assumed he lied because he obviously doesn't want to be tossing around his real name on the server. That was about when I found the company we'll call yourmom.com. Obviously, that's not the name. And on their website, they list their team members. And within this list, we have Imrik, their Discord manager, put two and two together. I asked him which name was the real one in a private DM, and had he answered truthfully, I wouldn't have even put this whole section in the video. But instead, he just said, what makes you think either one of them is real? After mentioning the company, he asked me to provide full legal documents that prove yourmom.com is even a real company to begin with. Of course, though, I didn't have any. I'm just an idiot doing the best they can with what they have here, okay? But the president of the company is a real entrepreneur who talks about his company quite a lot, actually. And their Instagram page clearly shows real meetings and events alongside a real human team. Although to me, the evidence was pretty clear, he still wouldn't budge, saying that I was gullible, that I would fall for scams pretty easily if that was enough to convince me, admits to being scammed by some Chinese agent, at least I'm not that dumb, okay? And avoiding the question like it's a game of dodgeball. The only thing I can derive from this is that he's just untruthful. He'd rather play ball than just answer a simple question. If I'm Rick or Brian was his real name, I wouldn't even be able to do anything with it. I was genuinely asking out of pure curiosity and yet he'd rather just call me gullible. Other than an overpriced shop, avoiding questions, and the inability to fully stick to one project, Mr. Pro is really just a misguided influencer. I am sorry, I couldn't think of a better word. He's tried his hand at content creation and streaming in the past, something I'll commend him for as I'm in the same boat. I know how challenging it can be. But it's clear that when it wasn't really going his way, he made the switch to all of this. Start spouting some weird shit, make a game worth more than a McDonald employee's salary, and just being an all around troll slash douche. Because he's learned that negative attention works much better than positive. I wouldn't have even made this video had all this been sunshine and rainbows, obviously. He might say I'm playing my part in 
all this because I'm bringing attention to him and yeah, maybe I am. But so what? He can receive all the attention he wants from this video. It doesn't really matter to me. Go support this man if you want. I'm not going to stop you. But unless he goes full on Andrew Tate or Jack Doherty, a career built on nothing more than negative perception will almost never lead to a long term success. Those kinds of people understand what it takes to go viral, but not what it takes to build a strong, respectable career. He had his moment and now look at where he is. Nobody really knows him anymore. Nobody in his server gives a shit about anything he does, not even himself. His server can either be some cool dudes or some weird dudes. It's kind of like rolling the dice from what I've seen. And from what I hear, there are the occasional people that just come in to curse out Mr. Pro and then immediately leave. So is that really what he wants his whole career to be? Why the fuck am I even asking? Of course it is. I assume the next project he's cooking up is a game. Only because he states that if it weren't for the hidden and the unknown, he wouldn't have even been able to get this one rolling. It could be this little game he showed off back in 2022 or another tech space adventure priced at $10,000 this time. He'll obviously launch it under the Pro X name, I doubt he'll change it by now. So I mean, just be aware really. Even if it is a new, reasonably priced game, his track record speaks for itself. He'll either overprice the game to get more headlines or just abandon it once he gets bored. Clearly having no long term drive or ambition other than to just be known as a fucking asshole I guess. <laughs> Honestly he isn't even a bad guy, Like he strangely has some actual decent advice every now and then, even technically giving me some good words, but that doesn't change the fact that what he is doing and what he has been doing is quite sketchy. I really don't give a shit if he hasn't made as much money or if he hasn't stolen any money, it's still just really fucked up. Hell I wouldn't even be surprised if I saw him on TLC next or something. I'm gonna upload the entire fucking little drama play I created while playing this stupid game on my other channel if you really want to fucking watch that. I just feel like I did not hurt my voice like that just for nobody to ever see it so you know what I'm uploading it. Sorry this video took a while to release I'm all good now. Subscribe if you like the video. If you're watching this Imric you have my full name to your disposal to threaten me if you really want to though I, I don't think me or you really care. But other than that price your games normally next time. I also wanted to quickly thank everyone for 3,000 subscribers. This is a fucking huge milestone I never thought I'd hit. So thank you guys so much. I love you all. Love you all so fucking much. Here's to 4,000, 5,000 and hopefully so on from there. Hopefully my channel doesn't die here. Anyways, ciao ciao.